Good evening and welcome to Newsbreak Live. I'm Hiba Samad. Thanks for joining us. Drivers faced traffic delays this morning at a large intersection. Traffic was closed in all directions at Hawthorne Boulevard and Pacific Coast Highway due to traffic signal failure. A torrent alert urged drivers to avoid the area and use alternative routes. While Caltrans worked on the problem, signals are back to working again. And there were other traffic delays you may have experienced as well earlier today. Concrete crews shut down the southbound lane on Prairie Avenue between 190th Street and Challenger Street until 4 p.m. this afternoon. Crews worked on repairing the sidewalk, then on Van Ness Avenue between 177th Street and 181st Street, roads were closed for street repair. The community had the chance to meet with local members of law enforcement firsthand. This morning, Torrance Police hosted coffee with a cop at the Starbucks located on West 100 Street. Coffee with a cop is an event hosted throughout the year by various agencies to bring community members together so they can discuss and learn about any issues important to them. It was launched in 2011 by the Hawthorne Police Department. As members were looking for more ways to interact with citizens, they serve each day. Now, Coffee with a Cop has been hosted in all 50 states and is considered one of the most successful community-oriented policing programs across the country. Exchange students from Kashiwa, Japan, stopped by iconic locations in Los Angeles today. As part of their 18-day stay, students experienced life in the United States. Today, they went to Little Tokyo, had lunch at the Grand Central Market, and visited the California Science Center. The special scholarship program has been a tradition since 1974, and each year, Torrance also sends a maximum of eight students to Kashiwa for three weeks. The program is put on by the Torrance Sister City Association, which promotes friendship, goodwill, and understanding between the city of Torrance and the city of Kashiwa, Japan. For more information, go to TorranceSisterCity.org. A big-name men's clothing store will remain open in Torrance. Brooks Brothers is permanently closing its store on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills on August 27th. The 30,000 square foot two-story building is currently listed as three at $300 million. But the store plans to keep its doors open at the Domo Fashion Center. Brooks Brothers is the oldest men's clothing store in the country and was founded in 1818. The retailer hasn't announced why they're closing just yet. El Camino College receives a grant for half a million dollars to offer more career readiness opportunities. A $500,000 workforce development grant will assist El Camino College in creating new in and innovative apprenticeship opportunities in the aerospace manufacturing field. El Camino was one of 11 colleges throughout the state chosen to participate in the California Apprenticeship Initi Initiative Program which targets priority and in emerging industry sectors where apprenticeship training does not exist. The goal is to teach students valuable skills before they enter the workforce, ready to compete in today's economy. El Camino plans to develop an aerospace, tech aerospace technician apprenticeship through its Career Pathways program. It's designed to support employers sponsoring apprentices, curricul curriculum development, equipment purchases, recruitment, and much more. Participants will focus on attaining skills in the areas of electronics, hardware fabrication and assembly, and aircraft, spacecraft, systems testing. Few businesses participating are L3 Technologies, MAG Aerospace Industries, and South Bay Workforce Investment Board. As Torrance students and parents get ready for back to school, there is more you can do besides shopping. The American Red Cross is reminding parents of safety precautions for kids going back to school. Make sure the child knows their phone number, address, and how to get in touch with their parents. If your child has plans to ride a bus to school, make sure they get to the bus stop early and stand away from the curb. Board the bus only after it has come to a complete stop and the driver or attendant has instructed you to get on. Always sit in clear view of the bus driver and never walk behind the bus. When children are walking to school, they should only cross the street at an intersection and use a route along which the school has placed crossing guards. 
If a high schooler is going to drive to school, remind them to put away all distractions. It's also important for drivers to be aware of children and slow down. Motorists should know what the yellow and red bus signals mean. Yellow flashing lights indicate the bus is getting ready to stop and motorists should slow down and be prepared to stop. You can find more of these tips at redcross.org. The state of California officially has a sport. Just yesterday, Governor Jerry Brown signed 24 bills into law with one naming surf as the Golden State Sport. The bill mentioned that California has some of the most world-famous surf breaks. Assemblyman Al Moritsuchi, who spearheaded the bill, has been a surfer since high school. Surfing is an iconic part of California's culture, and with 1,100 miles of coastline throughout the state, the sport brings in a significant amount of revenue. And speaking of fitness, a revolutionary fitness club is just days away from opening its doors here in Torrance. RevLive Fitness Club and Weight Loss Center is bringing the world of technology with aiding people in staying fit. The club is 6,500 square foot with innovative health tracking technology that designs workouts for individuals. The company has its own app and are able to track results straight from its cardio and weight machines. They will also offer one-on-one -on -one nutritional counseling sessions. The fully integrated service at the RevLife Smart Fitness Club generates personalized data unique to each user and can be shared with health, health professionals. This Thursday, the club will have a pre-opening party from 6 to 10 p.m. You can RSVP online. They're located at 22733 Hawthorne Boulevard. It's official. Starbucks' highly anticipated pumpkin spice latte will be back in just a week. The company made the announcement today the popular drink will return to stores earlier than usual. So set your alarms because on August 28th, customers will be able to indulge themselves in the warm, sweet and spicy cinnamon beverage. This also marks the pumpkin spice latte's 15th consecutive year back on the menu. And Olive Garden's never-ending pasta pass is back. The pass will go on sale this Thursday, and for $100, customers can get unlimited pastas for eight weeks. But that's not all. There's a new option that allows pasta lovers to access the deal for an entire year. The annual pass holder deal will give you 52 weeks of all-you-can-eat pasta dishes with a variety of toppings along with super salad and breadsticks. The restaurant chain will make 2,300 annual passes available for $300. And you have to be fast because they'll sell out pretty quickly. The passes can be used from September 24th through November 18th. And the annual passes can be used through September 22nd, 2019. Visit PastaPass.com on August 23rd. The deal will go on sale at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 11 o'clock in the morning here in Torrance. Now let's get to the weather. Today there was a high of 79 degrees with an expected low of 69 tonight. Tomorrow there will be a high of 74 degrees with an expected low of 67. Then the high will be the same on Thursday with an expected low of 66 degrees. Torrance police will participate in a unique procession to honor those killed on the highway. Members of the Torrance Police Department will be part of a ceremony at Wilson Park to remember first responders who have lost their lives helping others on the roadways. The focal point of the ceremony is the spirit casket, which not only represents first responders, but tow truck drivers and public transportation service workers across the nation killed by drivers. It also sends a message to drivers to slow down, move over. The ceremony will start at 2 p.m. Honda built one of its largest renewable energy installations in the world right here in Torrance. Torrance City Cable reporter Louis Tran has more. After two and a half years, the Honda Torrance campus now has more than 6,000 solar panels. Honda manager Chris Martin believes that renewable energy can go beyond the company and help achieve something much greater. It makes me proud. We have uh, you know, windmills and solar panels at other facilities in the U.S., so it's great to bring this technology to Torrance. Honda built one of the largest corporate-owned solar panels in Southern California. The project aims to help Honda achieve its goal to reduce half its total CO2 emissions by 2050. Right here in Torrance, Southern California is one of the sunniest places in, in all of the world. And so naturally, it's a very good fit to put solar at, at our facility here. 
The 6,222 panels will help power 20 to 75 percent of the campus buildings. To give you a sense of the size and scale of it, it's about 10 football fields. On the weekends when we're not using a lot of electricity here, essentially that energy is being pumped back into the grid and all the local homes and communities, they're getting green energy. The solar panels also benefit Honda's EV charging stations. These stations are completely supported by the solar panels and any Honda employee can use them for their personal use. It provides enough parking spaces for, you know, enough, a bunch of our employees to charge every day. It's a good example for associates to follow in whatever personal way we can to do our part as well. The eco-friendly system is one of Honda's many ongoing projects to reduce its carbon footprint. We'll continue to propose uh, additional renewable projects both here on this project, in this community, and in our society in order to meet our goals and society's goals. Martin has been personally using the same technology for the past 10 years. He hopes Honda's efforts will inspire his community to follow and do the same. We'll hopefully inspire other people to do it as well and save money and, and reduce their impact on the environment. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Louis Tran. Thanks, Louis. Honda is continuing to expand its solar panels to other Honda campuses across the United States. A one-of-a-kind event is returning, bringing world-class cars and aircrafts to the city. The Palace Verdi's Concourse de Elegance will take place on September 30th. It will celebrate the 25th year of the event. Discounted tickets are on sale now for $35. The Concourse brings together vintage cars, which are judged on their original state of their manufacture and the quality level of their fit and finish. The theme this year will be California style and feature California coachwork and Ferrari. Proceeds of the tickets benefits the Boys and Girls Clubs of Los Angeles Harbor, along with the Western Museum of Flight. For tickets, go to pvconcourse.org. And before the next half of Newsbreak Live, here are some upcoming events you won't want to miss. Tonight, you can catch Jaws on the big screen at Smock City Brewing Company. It'll start at 6 p.m. in their tap room. They're located at 1901 Delamo Boulevard. Then this sat Sunday, bring your lawn chairs and blankets, Wilson Park for movies in the park. At 8 p.m., they'll play Moana, and the movie is open to the public. From 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., you can enjoy yoga for a cause this Sunday. It will be taking place at Absolution Brewing Company. One ticket is $25. It includes an hour of yoga, beer, and lunch. The event will benefit Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation. For tickets, go to Yogi's for Charity, August 2018.eventbrite.com. Well, in just two minutes, Leslie Cortez, who is the Stormwater Outreach Coordinator with the City of Torrance, will join me live to talk about a program that is helping businesses stay green. We'll be back in just a few. When I was in high school, I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home, and that's hard when you feel like you're doing it alone. That's when I met our niece, my mom, as I call her. She started helping me a little bit, like, Nia, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but your future is more important. She's my strength. Just being a support for those hard days and those hard nights is not giving up on me. Thank you to my mama. I wouldn't have did this if it wasn't for her. Today is for my mama and everybody who had my back. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. Some people would think, well, maybe it's really not that big of a deal, but it really is. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. As a band, we try to make music that will fill the world with happiness. It's a magical thing getting to do what you love and seeing the way it affects the feelings of others. But there are still some people that want to fill the world with pain. Online bullying can be stopped, however. We can all work together to fix it. This emoji is in the symbol section of your phone's emoji keyboard. 
Use it when you see bullying online to say, I see what you're doing and it's not cool. Let's fill the world with music and love and beauty instead of anger and hate. Join us and become a witness. When you see bullying online, use this emoji to do something. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Welcome back to the second half of Newsbreak Live. And joining me is Leslie Cortez, who wears many hats in the Community Development Department. You've probably seen her at many city events as well. She is also the Stormwater Education Outreach Coordinator. How are you tonight? Great, Heba. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And there's so many great programs that you're launching that are already in the works, and we want to talk about those. So the first one is the Clean Bay Restaurant Certification Program. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the relaunch of this recently. Well, um, the program actually started in 2008 as a pilot program, and it, several cities in the South Bay uh, had are, were participants or are participants of this program. Uh, and what it is is actually a recognition program for the restaurants. Um, we like to be able, the program is meant to uh, call out the restaurants that are, have, you know, that practice ocean mindedness and sustainability in their business practices. So um, it's not meant to be like a health grade inspection or, or a, a, an, something where, to where we find anything wrong rather than kind of give that, uh, that restaurant a little bit of a boost in helping them uh, prevent ocean pollution prevention um, just by kind of changing their practices slightly without you know any cost involved um, but we've, we've relaunched the program recently because when if it first started it involved a, a pretty uh, long checklist of items that they would have to fulfill in order to you know pass a, with a hundred percent uh, since the relaunch of the program, we've kind of worked on the checklist a little bit and really made it easy for the restaurant owners to uh, certify by going online and doing their certification, doing a self-certification themselves at their convenience. And we also added an extra component to where they can work with me or, or call you know, someone from the city to come out and help them identify some of those problem areas that they need to improve on in order for them to pass. So once the checklist is done, they call your department and someone goes out there and they check out to see if everything is correct, correct? Yeah, basically it's just, it's a matter of simple items like, you know, keeping your establishment clean and having um, records on how you do your, their, basically the restaurant, an average restaurant uh, puts out about um, 150,000 pounds of trash. On, on a yearly basis, and I know it's a kind of a staggering number, yeah. but um, that involves their, it, it involves fat, oils, grease, trash, um, that if not handled properly, it could be detrimental to the ocean um, and contributes to the ocean pollution. So this is basically something to uh, help them along in, in doing their part in keeping the ocean's trash and debris free and keeping those things like fats, oils, and grease out of our storing drain storm drain systems. Especially since we live so close to the beach. What are some other benefits of being certified? One of them is receiving a decal that they can actually put on their front window, kind of like a health grade. Yeah, and the, the, you'll see this in front of in the windows. And if you can't, like a lot of the cities, I know a lot of people probably don't notice when they walk into the establishment uh, next to their health grade, those certified restaurants would have that th this decal on it identifying them as a recognized restaurant for Clean Bay. Uh, there's actually si several cities, City of Santa Monica, Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach, Manhattan Beach, Culver City, Malibu, they all, are, are, they all participate in the program. And there's literally hundreds of restaurants out there that are currently identified as, as Clean Bay. And so our efforts here at Torrance, we've, we've kind of ramped it up a little bit and, and tried to work with the restaurants in order for them to get, you know, for us to get all of our restaurants certified, hopefully, you know, in the next uh, few months. Recently, Kirk Rosberg from the Torrance Bakery received a decal. Talk to me a little bit about some of the steps on the checklist that get them certified. I know you mentioned few, but maybe you can talk to me about the Torrance Bakery, any other businesses that were recently certified? Some of the restaurants we work with, for instance, with Torrance Bakery, it was kind of a piece of cake for him, no pun <laughs> <Literally>. intended, <laughs> to, um, to certify because he actually asked me to come out and say, hey, can you come and take a look at some of these areas and let me know if this will pa you know, pass me on the certification? And we actually identified some areas that 
uh, he needed that he wanted needed to work on and what kind of really was interesting to me is that he actually put out, put forth an action plan to get all of these items fixed and then within a couple weeks he contacted me and said I think I'm ready and we went through those items and some of them were just things like um, the cleanliness of, of their 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 mop sink or keeping their you know their storefront and their parking a parking lot areas clean and you know picking up trash and, and or cigarette butts and um, he showed me where his his records on his grease and oil uh, maintenance where they come and clean out the grease traps and he, he has a regular com a company come in and regularly to mm. check those and clean out if needed and basically just training and educating the employees on spill on you know spill prevention and stormwater pollution so they can kind of incorporate that into their everyday practice. Talk to me about stormwater pollution, ocean conservancy. You're the outreach coordinator and you your goal is to educate and spread awareness about this topic through in different initiatives. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's very hard because it comes down to habits, right? It is. I mean, it's funny that the people, you know, we always say there's a, a common uh, mantra that people say, well, the trash doesn't put itself there, you know, mm -hmm. and so it's really, we try to approach these type of things gingerly because there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of legislation out there now to um, that kind of uh, encourages us or, or more or less, uh, you know, asks us to be a little bit more proactive in the way that we're handling our waste and our trash and um, con using alternative options for things uh, to eliminate plastic such as the reusable plastic bags and plastic bottles. But it is um, really what it comes down to, what people take away from these, these type of programs and events and, and um, resources is education. I mean, education is, is key in this. And a lot of people, unless they know, you know, like the bigger picture, they, they probably don't even think about it on, a, on an everyday basis. But thanks to people like you who are out and about spreading awareness, there are many initiatives that you're working on. So let's mm -hmm. talk about a few of those. First off, um, recently at the op city's open house environmental fair, you were talking about stainless steel straws mm -hmm. and other ways people can recycle. Can you talk to me about that? And then Scoop the Poop program. <laughs> Sure, two completely different programs, yes. both both with the same mission in mind. But um, at the open house, I, I think a, people, a lot of people are now aware of the legislation that's come down or come forth with the banning of the use of plastic straws in uh, eating establishments. And while some restaurants have already conformed to that and are not are are not uh, offering them or offering them as an option, some restaurants have already kind of. I can, you know, convert it to some of the other options like, you know, the stainless steel straw, which we give about a thousand of these out at the, at the city yard open house. I got one. They're amazing. They, yeah. And they, and these actually come with their brushes. If you go, you know, you can go on Amazon and get one for three bucks, but it doesn't come with a cleaning brush. And that's really important to know that, you know, you can use it over and over and, and keep it clean and, and sanitary. There's other options that they're using now, like bamboo and, and paper and pasta. And I, quite a you know rest uh, Santa Monica is completely straw free and you right. should I mean if you go to some of the restaurants there's kind of neat to see some of the materials that they're using now um, but in lines with that I mean there's also the potential of the banning the use of plastic utensils when you do takeaway at the restaurants and so there's like um, another thing that we did at the open house was offer these uh, uh, bamboo based Utensils. It comes with chopsticks too, which is another selling point. A lot I of people. I have that too. I got <laughs> that A lot that of too. people like, but that's another thing that people, you know, kind of, we don't like. We like to approach, you know, uh, environmental awareness kind of more gingerly than some other places that are a lot more stringent. So we kind of take baby steps. We started with the reusable bags mm -hmm. and providing reusable totes to our residents and uh, community. Well, it, it was kind of like. Drop off 10 plastic bags, get a free reusable tote. Mm. And then we have, you know, now we're doing the straws and then the utensils. And the, obviously we do some, we do a lot of outreach as well as like with the cigarette litter and taking care. And that's another detriment to the ocean. One of the largest uh, items, as you know, Heba, that we pick up at the beach cleanups um, countywide are cigarette butts. So that's one of the things that we uh, promote a lot. So as far as the Scoop the Poop program, it's... Um, Exactly what it is. It's not a new program as uh, many municipalities currently have an ordinance against uh, uh, pet owners not picking up after their pet. Mm. 
The only challenge in that is that you have the the pet owner mm -hmm. has to be kind of caught in the act in order to be cited or fined for that, and it is against the law to not pick up after your pet. So what we do, and it is an ongoing problem. I mean, if you're out there, I mean, I'm, me personally, a longtime dog owner and and uh, working vol a volunteer for an animal rescue, I, I'm not programmed that way to not you know pick up after my pets. I sometimes it just confuses me as to what the issue is is why people don't pick it up and we find as we've had as I've approached people who are walking their dogs and don't pick up after their pet mm -hmm. I say I go and say um, is there a reason why you're not picking that up and they say I don't have a bag so rather okay. than you know sit there and try to argue about the reasons why <laughs> and while you know while the, while the you know the dog's ready to go home is we offer the city of Torrance has always for the past several years and I know it's not um, widely advertised but Torrance residents can actually pick up a free pet waste dispenser and it already comes with 10 wow. biodegradable bags in it and these are easy to refill you can go to any pet supply store and make sure that they get the biodegradable bags because these are the ones that break down in, in the landfills so and someone can just stop by the community development department come into the permit center tell them uh, let us know that you need to pick up a pet waste dispenser and we've got them on hand so I mean we do try to make things a little bit easier for everyone and provide the resources they need um, to do that and it's all about participation um, and there's an upcoming event which I'm sure you need people to sign up for Team Torrance as they're participating in the 20th year of the beach cleanup, the coastal cleanup. Mm -hmm. So you were just talking about cigarette buds, um, which I'm sure are one of the top items picked up at this beach cleanup. Mm -hmm. So tell me, it's coming up September. How can people volunteer, participate? What is it all about? Well, the annual coastal cleanup uh, event is uh, sponsored by, it's, it's been a long standing event for many, many years, uh, sponsored uh, in, by the Ocean Conservancy, Hill the Bay, and the California Coastal Commission. And then Torrance has, I, I'm proud to say that Torrance has been participated in this event for, this is our landmark 20th year. Well, it's amazing. If you could believe that. And um, it never gets old and it never gets dull. And <laughs> I think that uh, September 15th is the date it's uh, being held at Torrance Beach and for those who don't know we do have a beach and it's um, a small beach and it's a very clean beach so uh, one of the th and the, the uh, ir irony of having such a small beach is that we get about usually you know four to five hundred volunteers show up on that day and um, rather than because we know it's a clean beach and uh, there may not be a lot of trash to pick up. We use that opportunity to educate. Mm. And this is like our platform to be able to, to let everyone, all the participants that are there, know why they are there. Uh, mostly, you know, not just to clean the beach or, you know, spend the day, you know, under the sun and, you know, on a clear day. And there's a lot of activities. We'll have some free giveaways. Oh, we'll fun. have, um, rumor has it that we may, that Honda may be sponsoring lunches if they, if the volunteers hang. Um, students get community service credit for up to three hours, so we do get a lot of um, young students and, and, and uh, youth organizations that come and participate. So um, we, like I said, have a lot of a huge turnout at the Torrance Beach, but there are 51 other sites uh, throughout Los Angeles County that really, really need volunteers and may not be as, as, as small or, or as clean as Torrance Beach, so uh, we also encourage volunteers to, you know, or people to come out and, and come out to some of the other sites on that day. Um, so there's a lot of ways people can get involved. If they have any questions, they can reach out to your department. Mm -hmm. And are there any other ways that people can learn more about resources to stay green? Any, how can people get in touch with you? Um, there's a, there's a, several ways they can. They can always contact me, uh, being the outreach coordinator uh, for, for events and uh, environmental awareness. There's the uh, our, web, our our department websites. Public Works has a outreach uh, coordinator for uh, recycling and waste management. She uh, Allison Sherman. She's wonderful and puts on some really great events that raise awareness. Uh, our economic de uh, development depart uh, division of our city manager's office is very proactive in green initiatives, uh, as well as my department, community development, where we have. The, in our environmental division and of course the outreach and education for stormwater. Uh, there's other sites that are you know other than the City of Torrance site. Actually the City of Torrance has their own recycling uh, website and it's called RecycleTorrance.org right. and that's where they can learn how do I get rid of 
my electronics? How do I get rid of my paints? How do I get rid of, you know, there's a lot, how do, where do I recycle this? And you basically uh, have this resource where you enter what you want to get rid of and it tells you where you can go to, to, to dispose of those things. So that's a really good resource in addition to the county's 888 Clean LA website. Well, Leslie, thank you so much and thank you for all that you do to keep our environment clean. My pleasure. Well, that does it for Newsbreak Live. If you ever have news or video that you'd like to share, please email us at newsbreak at torrentca.gov. Also, if you missed any portion of the show, you can catch it all on Torrent City Cable's YouTube page. Have a great night. Thank you.